It's Friday, on the streets of Kashmir's largest city. It's the day Muslims normally gather to pray. But in recent weeks, it's also become a day of protest. Indian authorities are working hard to keep a lid on displays like this. But they can't change how people feel. There is only one solution. Gun solution, gun solution. There is only one solution. Gun solution, gun solution. As protests break out across Kashmir, Indian officials repeat what has become a well-worn soundbite. There has been no major law and order situation reported from across the valley. Life is slowly returning to normal. And the situation is uh, returning back uh, slowly uh, to the normal. But things here don't seem normal. Kashmir has been a conflict zone for decades. But when India moved to strip the region of its autonomy on August 5th, the situation came to this. Thousands more troops and a curfew bringing daily life to a standstill. Phone lines and internet access were shut down, cutting off around 8 million Kashmiris from the outside world. So we came to see what's actually happening here. We visit a neighborhood known for frequent clashes between protesters and Indian security forces. People here are in mourning. Fahmida Shagu was at home with her children and her in-laws on August 9th. Police started firing tear gas at protesters outside. Fahmida's husband, Rafiq, helped rush her to the hospital, but doctors could not revive her. A sudden death and no one to hold accountable. Uh, we really demand justice. But from who? I don't know if we'll get justice, my kids will get justice. I don't know. In addition to tear gas, for years, Indian forces have used pellet guns to quell unrest in Kashmir. These shotguns fire cartridges full of lead pellets that lodge themselves in the flesh. They are supposedly non-lethal, but can cause life-changing disabilities. Parvis Sophie says he was at home when he heard a commotion outside. When he opened the door to see what was happening, he became a target. <laughs> In the name of maintaining law and order, Indian forces have licensed to shoot with near impunity in Kashmir. There's no official number for the injured. But in just one hospital here, sources told us over 60 people had been admitted with pellet wounds since the lockdown began. Still, this doesn't stop some people. Or inshallah, you'll be tigers, inshallah, mishpur umiyat binir bay, it's kalas is in the chin, inshallah, Rahman. And lives here have been upended in other ways, too. This woman's 22 year old son, Mehraj Adin, was arrested. <laughs> She doesn't know why he was taken. Since then, authorities have been giving her conflicting information. This is not an isolated case. Since early August, thousands have been arrested without being charged, and there's no indication when or if they'll be released. It's, it's their media, they can say anything. They are not showing us what's happening around us. They called it normal. Nothing is normal here. 
my kids. And they're asking me every night why mama has died. It's really hard. Although some landlines have been reconnected, Kashmir is still largely cut off from the rest of the world. That helps authorities keep stories like these quiet. But as the days pass, they're getting louder. <laughs> 